interested in these group of kids and the school. Yeah, I read an article in the New York Times in 2007 about a really talented young chess player, and I found out that he had gone to this school that was right around the corner from where I live. So I decided to just drop by there one day and see what this school was doing so well that was producing such amazing young chess players. And um, I, I I saw the school and I saw that it was actually much more than chess. They supported all, all kinds of after school programs, but it, it just started with that one article and that kind of just led me down a path <laughs> to the film. And how long did it take you to follow the, the kids and to complete yeah. the film? We have been working on the film for probably close to four years. Wow. But shooting continuously was about a year and then editing continuously for about a year. But the entire journey has been about four years now. So did you become close to the to the kids yeah. and, the, and everything? Yeah, they're they're great. I mean, we're we're friends on Facebook. Of course, but, you know, I think you, you know you spend that much time with somebody yeah. and they let you into their life. I think it's inevitable that you'll be part of their life and somehow you know. And I mean, I think we will be. How how much have have their lives changed uh, because of the movie? Well, you know, not much yet because you know we've just premiered at South by Southwest about a month ago. Um, and this is only like maybe the third festival that we've gone to, but you know, <laughs> they're getting a taste of it when yeah. they come to some of the festivals. And you know, when they get up on stage, they're, they, they're like, oh my gosh, it's a real movie. <laughs> like, you know, they didn't know, or they couldn't imagine yeah. what it would be like. So I think when the film has like a wider release and, and they're being asked to come on like talk shows and stuff, then I think it'll really hit them. Did you yourself learn a lot about chess, or were you ever interested in? I'm interested in chess, absolutely. Uh -huh. I mean, I think it's like one of the most mysterious and beautiful games there is. But and I, I know how to play. I know how to move the pieces, but I haven't. I feel like I'm so wrapped up in the movie of yeah. it. I haven't been able to give myself time to actually just sit down and enjoy playing. I'm sure you learned a thing or two. Oh, I know. There's watching, like a whole right? wealth of knowledge that I'm going to unleash on the chess. I just need like some time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, and congratulations at South by. I know you guys got, you know, yeah, we won the audience, yeah, award. the audience award, and the film got picked up for the remake rights by Scott Rudin, who's a really amazing producer. And yeah, so congratulations, and enjoy the festival. Thank you so much. About yourself. Uh, my name is Bob Byington, and um, my film is Somebody Up There Likes Me, mm -hmm. and it's a comedy that stars uh, Nick Offerman, plays uh, Ron Swanson on Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so already it's a already I, I want to laugh. <laughs> he does make a lot of people laugh. So uh, tell me a little bit about your film. Um, well, it's a comedy about um, some people who uh, their lives kind of pass them by, and um, so the, the jokes are are kind of designed around the idea of wasting your life and how funny that is. <laughs> is this like from personal experience? Or? <laughs> no, I haven't wasted my life at all. <laughs> Obviously, you're here at the right. festival. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of based on personal experience um, and trying to find some humor in that rather than uh, being too depressed about it. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about working with, with the actors that you worked with. I mean, what was that? Uh, well, working with Nick Offerman, uh, he was also a producer on the film, so he worked you know, very hard um, both as an actor and also as, as a crew person, so that was remarkable. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we had uh, Jess Weixler, who's an actress who's in a movie called Teeth. Did you ever see Teeth? No, but I know about it, yeah. So we had, we had Jess, and she's great, too. So, really great cast. Um, without question. That's a nice camera. Thank you. <laughs> it's a Pentex. <laughs> so, uh, is, when is the movie playing? Uh, the, yeah. Tonight? Tonight, okay. Great. Do we have time to get the, the word out? The word out? Uh, probably not. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Um, well, you got picked up by IFC, so that means it's an intellectual <laughs> ghost film. Well, uh, uh, the I in IFC stands for independent, so uh, intellectual. Well, but their films, the film 
things that they, you know, have under their belt that are, are wonderful or great. So tell me a little bit about your film. Uh, well, The Pact is a ghost story, mm -hmm. and it's about a pair of sisters whose mother has passed away, and they come and they spend the night in her house. Uh, and after spending a couple of nights, they get the sense like there is something else in there with them. And to, uh, to tell you much more, it would, uh, it would ruin something. <laughs> so uh, tell me a little bit about the actors in the film. Well, um, it stars a girl named Katie Lotz, who is a newcomer, but you're probably going to be hearing a lot more from her. She's an amazing, very physical actress. Uh, she had a little stretch on Mad Men in a supporting role, which a lot of people know her as. This girl from uh, Beyonce, friend, Berkeley Hippie, who John Hamm comes on to. But in this role, uh, she came into the room when we were trying to you know, find our star, and before she said anything, I knew she was the one. She's just an incredibly uh, kind of physically powerful without saying anything. When you see the movie, you'll see that she, she, she kicks some, some serious ass. And uh, the rest of the uh, cast has some real highlights. Um, the supporting role by Casper Van Dien, who was the star of Star Trek Troopers, um, that Casper did this movie is still the other creator. It's so weird that he's been so love working with him. And there's a, a girl named Haley Hudson, uh, whose first role was uh, as Lindsay Lohan's best friend in Freaky Friday, who plays a psychic in this movie, who absolutely steals her scenes. Everyone talks about her. Yeah. So, uh, what interested you in, in making this film? Well, the story of uh, the making of the movie is that I made a short film called The Pact, and that uh, premiered at Sundance in January 2011. And at that premiere of this 10-minute movie I did, there were some guys in the audience uh, who uh, finance independent films, mm -hmm. and I met with them a couple days later, and they said, we want to make a feature out of this. And then 40-something weeks later, we were done. Wow. So it was the first time with that short film I made something that was like a horror. Uh -huh. And then with this film, I just went full on. It's a full on horror. Wow, so you're living the dream. <laughs> this is amazing. Like, here, would you like to make a feature? We're going to pay for it. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and we, of course, we had to fight uh, time and money, I guess, as every movie did. So yeah. It's a very small budget. But uh, all the main people who worked behind the scenes on the short went on to work at the feature, and it really was a, a labor of love. You know? So, yeah, yeah, absolutely the dream. Yeah. See if the next one's the dream. So, what advice would you give someone who is just starting out? And I mean, it seems like most of it is really luck. I mean, it is talent, but there are so many talented people out there. Well, you know, I think the way that you get lucky is. Is by by uh, putting your stuff out there because you, you won't get lucky and hit with something unless you're making films and writing scripts and talking to everyone you know about how to get a film made and that's how I ended up making my first film. So it's tenacity, you yeah. know. And the other thing was uh, when I made the pact short, I didn't make it as a to make it as a, a trailer for a feature. I made it because I thought it would make a good ten minute movie. Mm -hmm. And because of the quality of that movie, I got to make the feature. So I would say to anybody who's interested in making films. The last thing you should be doing is marketing yourself. The first thing you should be doing is actually just making films. That's great advice. <laughs> well, I have one more question. Um, so you had to stretch out the story. How hard was that? Well, the uh, the feature is kind of uh, it's, it's an expansion and it's a kind of reimagining. Of it. The short is a very different movie. The short is kind of like uh, you use the word intellectual. <laughs> it's kind of a metaphorical horror movie. The, the short is. But I decided that um, with this feature, it was going to be totally different. It was going to be um, the kind of horror movie that I wanted to see when I was 15 or 16 years old. And so uh, um, the first 10 minutes of the movie are the same as the short, and then it becomes something entirely different. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Congratulations. My pleasure. It was good to meet you. It was good meeting you, too. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> you can smile. You can smile. Yeah, don't be afraid. It's like friendly. a shot of my nose and eyes. No. You have beautiful eyes. Or is that a wide? <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the film and about yourself. Um, well, it's 
a film that shadows a number of the world's best dancers, and they're young. They're between the ages of 10 and 17. They're extremely gifted and extremely de dedicated, and I wanted to show how different the ballet world is than common perception. There's a military father who is so supportive of his son's career, and then of course when his son's not dancing, playing football or playing baseball, awesome. he's a total chalk, and he's a skateboarder, and we skateboarded with him too. Um, and then you've got a young man from Colombia, the country, and um, there's this beautiful extremely popular blonde in the film and you think she's got it all, you think she's perfect and everyone wants to be like her but then it's very interesting, she has this moment where she's very nervous and she messes up on stage and it's so, for me it's so fascinating not only to see the perfect people, it's really interesting to see the drama, the tension and how different this world is than most people think and I also really I really didn't want to make a film that only ballet dancers could enjoy. This is the type of film that when you drag someone there who doesn't even like dance, they end up loving it just as much as the dancers who see it, which is really exciting. So, um, tell me a little bit about your background. Are you a ballerina or were you a ballerina? Um, I danced my entire childhood mm -hmm. and I didn't dance professionally. I went into other areas, but ballet was extremely important to me growing up and I lived that world to be able to document it in a way that I felt would be a really accurate portrayal of that world. I also knew that as a first-time filmmaker, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew, and so to choose a topic that you knew something about is just more strategic and um, the likelihood that it will be then be in theaters around the country, like my film, will be um, increases because um, I was extremely dedicated to ballet, and now this film has become my new uh, passion. So. so when the people who are in your film, have they seen the film? Yep, all the young dancers in the film have seen it. They adore the film, which is wonderful. Um, and um, they are going to be heavily promoting it, and they're very gifted kids. And um, even though I show all aspects of their world, you know, you see them fall, you see them cry, you see all of the backstage components. They still love it because ultimately at the end of, at the end of the day, that's true life. <laughs> what happened at that moment, I am not the type of filmmaker to cut out things like that and to remove, but, you know, I, after a while, just only seeing perfection is boring. We want to see the complexities of the ballet world and the dance world. I can only imagine. I mean, the ballet world is so complex and yeah. competitive. It's way more diverse than people realize. In the film, there's a Sierra Leonean orphan whose parents were murdered by rebels, and her only dream in life has been to become a ballet dancer. And in the ballet community, there are very, very few African American females. And so she's trying to make a difference and really um, carve a new path for herself. And I'm extremely proud of her. And she will be very famous regardless. Of this film, she will be very famous. Someday. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Did you guys? Did you go to South by? Yes, I was. I was there at South by. Was, did, did it play there? Yeah. Because I, I think I saw it. <laughs> oh, great, really? Great. You saw the German one. It's the only German one that was there. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, at least I think it was German. <laughs> I didn't I understand. Know. It was so. a lot of uh, a lot of people. It was a botched threesome, and then they did a bunch of other stuff. It was crazy. Yeah. Is, is that the one with the kids who? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Like it. <laughs> That's it. That That's was our so film. funny. Yeah. So how are you involved in, in the film? I'm a writer, director, and a producer on it. Wow. Yeah, I did a lot of it. So you speak German or what? <laughs> no, I don't speak German. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I could speak German, but uh, I made a film that was in Cologne, and so I had to. I, it didn't make any sense to make it in English. I mean, this is a, this is a people about people in Cologne, so they had to use their own language. And, <laughs> yeah. and uh, it was great. I mean, I wrote the script. They were good enough to, to work with me on on how they were going to translate and talk and, and speak it. And so that's what we did. We we kind of worked through that. So how is that process like finding the actors and? Very difficult. <laughs> I had a great producer, great German.
my producer, yeah. Christopher Becker, <laughs> who knew a lot of great people. He's based there in Cologne, and he brought a lot of people to the table, and we, we made it work. It was really nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for people who don't know, tell us a little bit about the film. Uh, Playtime is like a it's like a seamless journey through the lives of German youth on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, it's just a way of saying it. It's, it's about just people being people yeah. on a Sunday. <laughs> it um, it's inspired by a film called People on Sunday by Billy Wilder and Kurt Siad Mag. Uh, from the 1930s, it's a silent film. Um, so we watched that, and I had to make a film that was kind of inspired by that. And it's it's also heavily influenced by uh, Slacker, which I, I'm a Texas filmmaker, so you know I saw Slacker and I was really moved by that. So that's what we're doing. It, you know, and it's a very European film anyway, because I can't imagine like Americans doing the things that they're doing. I mean, yeah. it seems just kind of different from like our culture. Well, yeah, I mean, you know? like, well, it, it just stories like me and my producer and my cinematographer on the beach or on the banks of the Rhine. Yeah. And we're, we're location scouting, and then we look around and like there's all these males, like nude men. It's like, well, this is, Ger this is Germany, how yeah. are you? And so we have to go up to each one of them and say, hey, will you be in our movie? And that's, and I think it's pornography. Like, like, I could, yeah, well, I could do it, and my producer couldn't do it. But so my cinematographer, who's German, he yeah. had to go up and ask these guys in Germany if they would want to hear our film. And that was one of the first times in my life I wanted to have like a, a 185 mat, which is the black bar at the top of my yeah. I see here, I don't want to see now. Uh. It was great, and they were fantastic, and uh, they're really nice. All right, well, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I hope people see it because it's really funny. Me too. I, a lot of shenanigans. Yeah, we're, we're very proud of the film, and we're very honored to be here in Dallas. Thank you. Tell me your name and your film. Brock Williams is my name. The film is 92 Skybox Alonzo Morning Rookie Card. Wow, that's a long, interesting name. So tell me about your film. It is a uh, short comedy. It is about two brothers who uh, haven't seen each other in years and they don't really get along. But they are forced to come together to, to go to their dad's funeral in Kansas City. And one of the brothers is convinced that in his old bedroom at home he has a 92 Skybox Alonzo Morning Rookie Card that he's trying to find because he thinks it's worth a lot of money now. Uh, but the other brother doesn't really make it easy for him to, to find the card. Why do funny things happen when people die? <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I think that life is just generally funny, regardless of sort of what's happening. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think, I, I think people also often are looking for humor in tragic situations. But in this case, the in this story, the funeral is a very minor part of the story. <laughs> Comedy comes from these two brothers and the fact that they don't want to be around each other. So, did you write the script too? No, I produced the film. And then, okay. Um, Todd Scar is the name of the writer director. We've, we've been friends and worked together for several years. So, how did you become interested in the film? Well, in this one, Todd and I worked on a, a low budget. Uh, feature comedy a few years ago called Box Elder, uh -huh. and uh, we'd both been kind of busy working on our own things in the last couple of years, but he called me in October on a Friday, and he said, what are you doing next week? And I said, I don't know, and he said, you want to produce a short film? And he said, I, I checked with Sundance, and if we can get them a rough cut in 12 days, they'll still consider it uh, for the festival. Wow. And I said, okay, let's, yeah, let's do it. So we, uh, we very quickly put everything together and shot the film and sent a rough cut off to Sundance. Sundance and got in and premiered at Sundance and that was really exciting. So that was pretty quick. Has yeah. it changed from Sundance to um, Dallas? Did you guys make any changes? We did refine it. The version that we submitted to Sundance was a rough cut and they accepted it based on the rough cut. We polished it some and, and uh, kind of trimmed, trimmed maybe a minute out of it or something and kind of polished it up. But the version that played at Sundance is still the current version. Oh, cool. Yeah. So how long is it? It's 12 minutes. 12 minutes. Yeah. Wow. Some say that's the kiss of death, right? I mean, anything over... <laughs> no, I've actually heard that 12 minutes is a great length for shorts in terms of film festival programming. Yeah, um, they hate the, that, don't they? Well, a lot of the festivals that we've been to have said 12 minutes is, is, a, is a really good length. Because it's, it's just short enough that I guess you could put it in front of a feature, potentially. Um, but it's not, you know, but it's long enough to kind of tell, tell a story. Tell a story. <laughs> I think it's a good length. Well, I, 12 minutes or under, I think, is a good length. Yeah. I don't know. There's so some, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Missouri, or I live in Missouri for oh, the last okay. 12 years. Yeah. Yeah. I actually went to high school there here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. My brother still lives here, and my parents yeah. are here. So, uh, you have no love for the Rangers. <laughs> 
take it. Well, yeah, it's tricky. It was funny. I'm not that big into baseball. Oh. But it was funny when the Cardinals and the Rangers yeah. were playing because I lived in Texas for about eight years and then I'd lived in Missouri for about eight years and it was like, and I've only ever been to two Major League Baseball games and one was a Rangers game and one was a Cardinals game. So I was evenly split. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's a good answer. <laughs> I won't kill you. <laughs>